Hello guys and gals, me Mudahar, and you can't have nothing nice in today's society, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of a story here. I was waiting last night for a game to come out, a game known as Dragon's Dogma 2. Now ladies and gentlemen, I have a sleep schedule now, so usually when the game comes out, uh, it just installs onto my system. You know, preloads, I'm, I'm off sleeping and I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I can't wait to play Dragon's Dogma. Well, ladies and gentlemen, oh boy. <laughs> Let me show you the old Steam reviews for the Dragon's Dogma game right here. So here I got the play. I got a couple hours into the game, but of course it's got a mostly negative review. 13,000, 39% however, are positive. Now, when I see that, I'm like, ooh, that's not a good sign. What's going on here? As I was launching the game, one interesting thing that I saw suddenly show up in the store uh, before uh, I had any idea, this wasn't even really there when I was actually purchasing the game. All of this f DLC. <laughs> I, know it's, I know it's less than two minutes, okay? I'll be like a Fisher Price channel. Anyways, Dragon's Dogma 2. You get the camping kit, camping gear, you gain one special camping kit and make them available for purchase at special shops in game, efficient without being unduly weighty. You've got the custom sounds, the harpy lure item, the thoughtful gift, pawn indicators. You've got options where you gotta pay $279 for a character editor? What the fuck? Port Crystal, do you want some fast travel there, boyo? $399. And of course, one thing you'll see is Rift Crystals. Now, okay, to give you an idea, none of these microtransactions are required at all in the game, okay? I'm not saying this to defend it. I don't think microtransactions should belong in a video game that costs 94 Canadian dollars, okay? Before fucking taxes, right? You might be like, but Muda, they gotta make money somehow. That's what the $94 is for, motherfucker, okay? That's what it's there. It's not a free to play Korean MMO. It's not like I get the game for free and I gotta pay like 30 bucks, you know, and other bullshit fees to make the game somewhat playable. All right, the microtransactions shouldn't exist. If you're defending it, you're a cuckold, okay? You might as well spread your legs and take it. But anyways, to understand if you play the game regularly, you will obtain enough rift crystals and, and wake stones and port crystals and fast travels and gowl keys that you don't really need to buy this, okay? And that's what makes it really insulting. <laughs> the fact that this list exists just looks bad. And the fact that you don't even need to actually purchase any of this, because if you just played the game like normally, then again, nobody would really need to go out. Now you could say that this is for time savers, and that's the kind of people that I just don't understand. Like, dog, you go to the store and you buy Dragon's Dogma 2, like you fucking know this game is gonna take you, you know, a bit of time to get through. It's gonna, it's gonna be a chewy RPG. And yet you're still like, I don't have enough time. Let me just, let me just pay to not play the game that I bought. Just play the game, okay? It's not, it's not, it's not like a, it's not like it's an MMO. You don't need to reach end game. You don't need to finish the battle pass. It's a single player title. What's wrong with you? Now, for people who are dagging, uh, dogging on Dragon's Dogma like this, uh, Resident Evil, uh, you know, remake actually had a similar issue as well too. So I'm gonna show you this. Capcom has basically been doing this DLC shenanigander right over here. So even in Resident Evil 4, which was a great remake by the way, they sell, you know, separate content like separate ways. And then if you want like the original soundtrack to the game, 80 tracks, $33, okay? It's just original, fucking wave file swaps, okay? That's what it's, sorry. Costumes, you know, stuff that you would normally unlock in the game as well. Yeah, how about we sell them for like four bucks, okay? Five bucks. Some of these items are actually unlocks in the game. However, people who don't have the skill to play the game on professional or speed run it can just pay to get certain rewards, right? Now, I'm not saying that I'm cool with any of this. Uh, at the end of the day, it just exists. And it honestly, from a surface perspective, when you're looking at microtransactions like this, it just makes the game look cheaper, right? That's, that's about it. Now, Dragon's Dogma 2's microtransactions, again, I have just basically been going off with what other players have put in who've got previews, who've got like more hours than I do. But from my understanding and even from my play, you can obtain Rift Crystals just by exploring the world, just by, you know, playing the game. Now, I don't know if the end game is gonna be so grindy that maybe this is considerable, but from what I've heard, that's not the case. 
So anyways, now that we got past the microtransaction, you know, stab in the dark, this is now an issue that I feel is even worse than the microtransactions. It's the performance problems, okay? Now, Dragon's Dogma is not the only launch in history that has had performance problems. Tons of games nowadays come out with serious performance issues. But here is an image from Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, the IGN, where they were actually giving a performance review. And you can see that both consoles, the, the actual consoles, not PC, they're targeting around 30 frames, but they're running with an unlocked frame rate. Now for a game that, let me give you the problem with an unlocked frame rate, right? Most computer monitors, TVs, are basically displaying a certain amount of hertz, right? You set them, right? So 30 hertz, 60 hertz, 144 hertz, whatever. To give you an idea, playing a game that is locked to 30 frames per second with no errant spikes, right? Frame time spikes on a 60 hertz display is more enjoyable than playing a game that fluctuates between 30 to 40. When you play a game that fluctuates between 30 to 40, because you're not, you know, running a game that is easily divisible by the actual, you know, hertz on your display. So if you have a 60 hertz display, dividing it by two, 30, and that being perfectly like locked, perfect, feels far better to play than something that runs errantly between 30 to 60, because then you start to feel actual judder, sluggishness. The game feels actually worse to play. So that is one of the issues that I saw with this game too. And again, it even drops below 30 from time to time as well. The performance is like hit or miss on the consoles. I would have bought this game if they locked the frame rate down to at least 30, right? Then you could understand that they would lock it down. The game would perform at a certain baseline level, but they didn't do that. So I decided, fuck it, I'm just gonna buy the game on PC. My mistake! I'm sorry for buying a PC game in the year 2024 and expecting things to be different, okay? Now this game runs on the RE engine, which from my understanding is, in my experience, is a pretty optimized engine. Resident Evil 4 Remake runs like butter on my computer, okay? Dragon's Dogma 2 runs like a geriatric at a retirement home. All right, we are talking frame rates that go all the way down to the 30s, to the 20, high 20s, right? in the towns. Of course, when you leave into the wilderness, it might jump back up to touching 60. Maybe you get a little bit of 70 frame action going there, but that's the fluctuation. So the problem with Dragon's Dogma 2's performance is actually tied to the CPU. And based on what Capcom said to uh, IGN, this is exactly why. In Dragon's Dogma 2, a large amount of CPU usage is allocated to each character and dynamically calculates the impact of their physical presence in various environments. In certain situations where numerous characters appear simultaneously, the CPU usage can be very high and may affect the frame rate. So again, what this boils down to is basically them saying, yo, when you're in a town and there's NPCs walking around acting dynamically, which they do in this game, interacting with each other and you, that's when the frame rate drops the hardest. Now, I don't think RE Engine is built for open worlds, nor do I think it's built for having NPCs of this level. And when I say NPCs of this world, I guess the number I'm looking for is maybe like above four. Just because this game is this weird instance where like the towns look dead, but the performance is still bad. For some reason, the actual game will like render in NPCs right in front of you. So I don't know if this is like a CPU saving thing, a memory saving issue. Whatever they're doing is not actually working. The game is rendering all of these dynamic NPCs and they are dynamic because you can interact with them, recruit some to your party, some of them are traitors. I believe they can interact with each other. It's just this engine or however they programmed it is just way too taxing on the CPU. And it's not worth the actual like cost because I've seen much more livelier open worlds consume far less resources. Now on my system, I'm gonna give you a quick spec sheet over here. I'm just gonna show you what my system has. Um, just, just, for the, just for argument's sake. Uh, my system, if I give you a quick Neo fetch, uh, I am running, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not joking, a 5950X, so it's not the fastest processor in the world uh, anymore. It used to be fast, uh, you know, used to be flagships or, you know, the, the best of the best a couple of years ago, I would say. But yeah, it's still good enough to handle a video game, right? I would say. Uh, then I've got an RTX 4090 and about 128 gigabytes of memory. I am getting those same frame rates I showed you. So I can only imagine what other people are getting. 
The game is heavily CPU locked, and even people that have like 7800 X3Ds, like some of the best CPUs you can buy at the store right now, are having problems even reaching 60 frames per second. So if that's the high-end community of actual gamers, what the fuck is going on in the middle and the low end, right? And this is what I believe is way more unacceptable than the performance issues in the game, right? or sorry, the microtransactions. Bad performance, look, no matter how great your game is, no matter how high your Metacritic, mood of the story is great, mood of the gameplay is awesome. It might be, honestly it is. I enjoy the gameplay. The problem is when it's presented like a geriatric, it's not good, okay? It's not fun to play. You're just kind of sitting there waiting, ah, I wish this was patched, I wish they looked at this ahead of time and maybe released a proper finished title. The fact that they released this game with all of this BS attached on top of it, you know, all the anti-tamper DRMs like Denuvo, which have had a controversial history in regards to games that have high CPU requirements, the fact that they release it in the state, dude, they had to have known, right? Like, we're not crazy. Like, you, you, you had to have played the final bill to know that it wasn't running up to snuff. They still released it. And usually when I see bad performance on consoles, it makes me scared for the PC version, honestly. Because if you can't nail those consoles, I shudder to think how you nail the PC versions, right? But I made a mistake of buying into their trap and... Here it is, the game is basically <laughs> unplayable. Now the other situation that I saw was the fact that you can't even start a new game. So if you go into the main menu for Dragon's Dogma, it literally gives you two load options, option menus, not a new game. So in order to do a new game, what I had to do was I had to look up how to start a new game in Dragon's Dogma 2. Now this is already a problem when I have to look up articles on how to make a new game, a new save file. This is a single player game. It's not an MMO, but reading through it, one thing that they tell me is turn off the Steam clouds and then go to this directory in your system and delete your local save files, boot the game up and start a new game again. The problem here, this is a single player game. How hard is it to give us a save slot? Bro, on a console, you can just make a new user profile on your PlayStation or Xbox and get a new game. How is it? You shouldn't even have to do that. Just give us a new game option. Let people change their characters. Let people just start new files. Let them have multiple saves. What is up with Capcom's vice grip on a single player game that they have to put all of this extra BS to ruin all of the hype and fun and excitement people had for a game that genuinely is actually good. The only thing holding Dragon's Dogma 2 back, I shit you not, is Capcom's greed, Capcom's inability to optimize this game, on its release day. And you might be like, but Muda, they'll patch it at some point. It should have been released in a functioning state anyways. And you know, sure, you can sit back, relax, and wait for a uh, discount, but this is not something that should be supported. This is another bad release. And the thing that pains me is like, it's not like this is, you know, the Suicide Squad killed a Justice League or Battlefront, where like, those are objectively poorly made games. No, this is actually a good game. It's just a shame that Capcom had to absolutely drop the ball in making it happen. But, ladies and gentlemen, to be honest, shouldn't really surprise anybody. <laughs> if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Dislike if you dislike it. I would say, wait for a sale. That's it, wait for like 50% off. And if you're somebody who's like, but Muda, will this run on the Steam Deck? Bro, it barely runs on my 4090 5950X system. It's not gonna, dude, the Steam Deck's running this thing at like 15 frames a second, all right? It's not happening. That performance I showed you was before applying things like ray tracing and whatnot. Yeah, this game is that bad. Anyways, I am out.